So, Sally Musimanga, former executive mayor of Tuane Metropolitan, stepped down this week to position himself for the Gauteng Premiership if the DA wins the 2019 national elections in May. Taking office after the 2016 local elections, it uh, hasn't been an easy road for him. In his tenure, he was faced with service delivery challenges and survived three votes of no confidence by the opposition. His last leg of mayorship was marred with allegations of corruption. So let's get the lowdown. Solly's here in studio with us and he's going to talk to us about stepping down as the executive mayor of Twane Metro, what his time was like and I suppose what his future holds. Good to have you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you very much, Leanne, and good morning to the viewers at home. I want to get this question out the way yeah. right up front. Were you forced to step down? No, not at all. Um, you know, in 2014, I was a member of the provincial legislature. In 2015, I was. Um, and again, I was asked whether, you know, I would consider um, stepping up and, and, and becoming a, a, a mayoral candidate in Swan. So I left that position mm. because, um, you know, we did the numbers and we saw that we could actually win um, in Swan. And so I did. I went and campaigned. And the same thing um, is now uh, presented again to say, well, look, we have a great opportunity to start um, you know, uh, a, a campaign that will win us the province, what we did in Swane um, can be done now at a provincial level and we now need to make sure that uh, um, we focus on it. And that's yeah. uh, what we did. That, you say that's the long and short of it. However, you've got, and, 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 and I'm looking at what, what um, EFF leader yeah. Julius Male Malema went and said, and I'm sure you've heard it, it's not going to come as news, yeah. um, saying that uh, this is nonsense because in history, you have got mayoral candidates or mayors that mm. have been premier ca uh, candidates and yet they still stay in the position. He brought up Helen Zilla as an example. Well, and she went on to become the premier. Yeah. Why can't you do that? Well, first of all, um, I think uh, th there's a difference. Helen had a longer period to do it. That's number one. Number two is that, uh, you know, we're having a very uh, different setup in, 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 in the city of Tuan. For an example, every time I would be out of the city wanting to go campaign somewhere, the ANC would organize a, a so-called service delivery protest and nobody would want to talk to anybody except the, the mayor. So I would have to leave, I mean, Merafon, I would have to leave Merafon to go and address a so-called service delivery protest. And that, you know, had an effect in terms of the campaign and, the, and us, you know, um, gaining momentum. Yeah. So the party had to take a, a stance and say, well, look, do we want to, 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 to um, you know, endanger our, 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 our chances of winning? Um, or do we want to really, um, you know, focus on that? And we had to really make a choice. Yeah, and that was the choice. And yeah. so here we are. You've now vacated that position. Um, the person that's come into your shoes is Stevens Mokhalapa. Mokhalapa. Talk to us about him. Well, Stevens, uh, I've known Stevens for close on 15 years. Um, he's been a member of uh, that same co uh, the same council. Um, he was a councillor for nine years and is a member of, uh, or was a member of parliament uh, for nine, uh, for 10 years as well. So 19 years um, in, 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 in active politics. Um, you know, vast knowledge, um, somebody who's very well qualified. And I think is, he will do a good job from where we started off. Yeah. I, you know, I suppose I'd, I'd like to, obviously you're going to say you did a good job as the mayor, <laughs> but um, could you have done a better job? If you'd stayed a little longer, you know, could you have done better and more for I think I could have. Um, look, I mean, first of all, I mean, I don't have to say that I did a good job. Go ask uh, Moody's uh, rating. Twani in and now, after um, eight years, is now sitting um, top notches up. That has never happened in eight years. Um, the finances are better than what they have ever been. Um, there's now maintenance uh, budget and plan going forward. What I'm, what I'm, what I'm said is that, uh, what I'm said about is that I'm not going to see there. I'm not going to be there to cut the ribbons of some of the things that we have already started. Which, I mean, my predecessor will, um, you know, will, will then, uh, or, or those that the one that come after me, your successor, will, yeah. my successor, not my predecessor, <laughs> my successor will, you know, be able to then cut that. There's uh, now um, uh, a water project that we're finalizing in Hamans Kral that will ensure that the people of Hamans Kral have clean water once and for all. He's going to be, he's going to be opening that. We have now uh, started the rolling out of free Wi-Fi better than what it was before. Um, uh, more than 500 megs, we're now moving towards a gig, um, you know, for everybody who will be able to use it. And it's going to be rolled out in more places than what it's ever been before. So all those things are things that, uh, you know, I'm leaving behind are a foundation that I've laid. And I'm, I'm not going to be able to see. But here's the thing that I regret the most. If you go to the city every night, now, mm -hmm. there are people who are cleaning. 
every single night without failure. But go there nine o'clock the very next morning after the, 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 the rush hour. It's filthy beyond. Yeah. I regret not having had an opportunity to start a program where we are educating our people about taking better care of the spaces that they find themselves living in or working in. That's I'm, one thing I regret. I'm so glad you addressed that because I was about to jump onto it and say, yesterday we did a, cr a crossing to, was it yesterday? I think it was, to the Pretoria High Court. Mm. I actually couldn't believe that that was the High Court in Pretoria. Yeah. It is filthy. Yeah. It looks absolutely horrendous. Now, that's not a legacy you'd like yeah. to leave, unfortunately, but it is there. It is. But as I said, um, I, I challenge you, um, go there in the evening. After 7 o'clock every evening, you can send your crew to go and look. There are trucks, there are people who are literally sweeping the streets. Yeah. But every day after that rush hour in the morning, in the afternoon, it looks like nothing has ever been done. And that's something that I'm regretting that, you know, even if we, we, we're sending people out there to be cleaning, we're not taking care of the spaces that we find ourselves living in, and, and that is not good for us going forward. Yeah. Let's, let, you, you said last week that you, you, you're leaving the office with clean hands, yeah. that you feel your conscience is clear, you've done nothing wrong. Yeah. However, there have been so many accusations leveled against you. So let's try and address a couple of these and get mm. to the bottom of them. Um, uh, you, you talk about unqualified staff, the appointments right. that were irregular, unqualified, just to name a few, right. your, your spokesperson, your head of staff, your chief of staff. What happened there? Well, let's start with the spokesperson. The spokesperson is qualified, um, holds a degree in, 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 in media. Um, what was argued was that he didn't have the number of years that are required for him to be there. But there is something called a waiver, which was applied for and which was accepted. And by the way, Solim Simanga only interviewed two people, the chief of staff and the city manager. The chief of staff was interviewed by me and a panel, right, after going through a rigorous process of HR. So what you get is what you, you then get summarized CVs after the HR gatekeeping processes have taken place. So HR will come to you and say, here's a file of the people that you need to interview. That these, these are the people that we think are better suited to be, um, to be interviewed in the final stage. That happened with the city manager as well. And when we did with the city manager, it was not even Solim Simanga alone who did interviews. The EFF was there. COPE was there. Um, ACDP was there, um, the ANC refused to be there, um, and you know, it was their choice. But when we then took um, the appointment to cancel, they actually approved. Nobody um, you know, um, uh, uh, rejected the, 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 the appointment of the city manager. Mm. And? So um, the, there was one of uh, uh, Marita Okam. So those were the only two. Um, and, and, and the third one was um, uh, uh, Mr. Um, Stefan de Villiers which I was not even part of the interview. So those are people that were appointed um, by um, junior staff in the, in that, or not the junior staff, but by the, uh, the, uh, the chief of staff in the, in the administration. I'll take that as, as, as the leader of, 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 of council at the point in time to say, if anything goes wrong, you have to take the responsibility for it. I'll take responsibility for it. That perhaps I could have played a much more over, um, uh, uh, um, a bigger oversight role um, yeah. than what I did. And something that I think I've learned and going forward, uh, it's something that I think can be applied a whole lot better. That, of course, is not the only problem. There's a running yeah. battle with uh, Muketsu Masolo. Yeah. And this is a very big problem because it's the Glad Africa scandal, accusations flouting there, yeah. awarding the tender leveled against your senior position. Yeah. Let's, let's get the facts here now. Well, last year when uh, a whistleblower came, came to us and said, look, I think there is some irregularity in terms of uh, the contract that has been awarded. I didn't ask for a commission of inquiry. I didn't, you know, try and sweep it under the carpet. I took it to council. I said to council, let's go and investigate. They, the ANC were flip-flopping all over. In September, when we took the, the matter to, 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 to council, they re release a press, uh, they, they, they release a statement to say that, oh, well, this needs to be investigated. When I say let's investigate it, they said, no, we shouldn't investigate it. And then they said, let's investigate it. Then I said, let's suspend the city manager so that we are able to then get the investigation out of the way. Then they refused to do that. So there's been flip-flopping ever since September twice, October, um, November. All these things have been happening. And these are things that I'm saying, I'm leaving. I've, I've never hidden anything. I've put everything on the table. It's in the public to say we wanted to get to the bottom of it. The city manager ended up even going to court and saying this is a process, uh, um, you know, that is a witch hunt and there was nothing wrong with the process that had been followed. And when the Uta General came uh, with the report, 
you know, there's now a change in tone. So yeah, it is we've, irregular. Yeah, we've said, we've said that if there is something wrong, let us investigate it. I've never hidden anything away. I've said, let's investigate this. When the, um, the initial um, report came, we, uh, which we couldn't release because then it was interdicted. Again, it's something that we wanted to put to on the table and say, let's get to the bottom of it. But then we couldn't get to the bottom of it. Yeah. I mean, if you look at it, um, basically 317 million rand in irregular money was spent on this contract. I and mean, that's, uh, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Look, I think, let, let me, let's go back and, and, and then get to where this whole thing started. In uh, May 2017, at our strategic uh, uh, breakaway session, the city manager came and said, look, the Auditor General has highlighted that's 10 billion rand worth of projects that are hanging. Projects that are either complete, not handed back to the city, projects that have run out of money, projects that have money but have stalled, um, a whole lot of range of projects that are there because we didn't have the capacity in the city to deal with uh, project management. That's why you're sitting with such a big problem. Now, we, know, we were not going to be able to hire, um, you know, staff in each and every department to be able to then look into this because it's specialized. I mean, if you go into your roads department, as an example, you need a special a project manager for that. You go to housing, you go to water and sanitation, uh, you need those. So he then says, look, let's go and look into the market in terms of what we're able to then bring together. We agreed on that. That was, um, you know, when, um, you know, they went on a regulation 32. Came back with a letter um, from Treasury and said, Treasury says we can, we can proceed. And that's where we took it from. Yeah. So we took it, uh, that, uh, the presentation that was done. And by the way, that is the ANC's version of me knowing what was happening. It, it is that letter that says we are going on a Regulation 32 um, and with a panel that is going to be adopted or that is going to be um, you know, hired from, from, from a DBSA. So that's how we, we, we got to move from there. I still challenge the ANC even today to produce an evidence that says we knew anything over and above what we say we know. Mm. Okay, well, challenge out. Let's see if they can do that. There's also issues of, of basic service delivery and some of the challenges. I mean, I think one of the biggest things is, is the sewage problem. Yeah. I mean, that is, it, people shouldn't be living that way. I agree with you. Um, and this is why in, 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 in Harankua we had actually started replacing the pipes because somebody who was hired before our time did a very, very, very bad quality job um, that in, in that particular area. Pipes are now closing up, pipes are bending because they put wrong specif uh, uh, specifications of, of, of piping in that particular area. So those are actually now closing and we are now doing a repiping of the particular um, of, 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 of started in Karankua, it's going to go into Mabopane and into Sushanguve. The unfortunate part is that it's going to cost a whole lot of money than what the uh, municipality has um, you know, on a year-to-year on a -year basis. So it's going to be phased in as, 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 we, go, as we go on. Leanne, yeah, I must also tell you that in the city, for instance, in, in certain areas like your Valala, you have pipes that should have been replaced about 20 years ago, asbestos pipes that should have been replaced 20 years ago. In Sinoville, if um, you go to certain parts of Pretoria North, certain parts of Harsfontein, um, certain parts of, of even in, in, in Mamelodi, you still have pipes that needed to have been replaced um, 20 years ago. So that... Uh, we are now finding that we now need um, a whole lot of uh, money to, to, to take care of the backlog so that we are able to then provide going forward. And this is why we took 21% of our operational cost and said this is going to be money allocated now towards the backlog and towards ensuring that there's preventative maintenance going forward, which was never there before. Yeah. So you, you still feel that that is going to be rectified. I mean, if people look at the state of, of yeah. Twane now in the city and when you came in yeah. uh, two and a half years ago, is that it? Two and a half, About two years, and a half ago. years ago. Yeah. And they think, you know, should we vote for should we vote for the DA again? Give them another chance, or say, no, it's it's over. You know, let's not do this. You know, what, one thing I I was hoping um, that people will, will begin to realize is that um, as much as we've been communicating that the backlog that we've inherited is going to take, I'm, I promise you, by the end of the term, wouldn't even have gotten rid of the backlog because if you look at the amount of money that you have. Um, and the backlog that you're sitting with. For instance, um, just roads alone, the inner roads that needs to be built are going to cost in a range of uh, 60 to 80 billion rent, the inner roads in the city. And the city doesn't even have more than, uh, more than, more than, more than uh, 4 billion in its capital budget per year. So you can then now do the maths. So you are now sitting with a huge backlog, but you're now sitting with limited resources in terms of how you're then able to then implement um, you know, the money to be able to the ro roll out those projects. So... 
it's going to take a bit of time. We have now also started partnering with uh, some private entities as well. I mean, um, as for as SAB has already come on board. They've looked at some of the, the, the inner routes and some of the piping that is going into an area that they're operating in. And they've already jumped in on that and they're assisting us, um, you know, in that, in that particular regard. So it's actually then lessening the burden that we have to deal with going forward. Mm. And this is why... My passion now is to go into province and make sure that the money that is coming from province into the municipalities is actually directed and coordinated in a way that will have the greatest of impact at a local level where people will be able to feel service delivery. Okay. I need to ask a big question because it's something that uh, over the last, during these state capture commissions and all of these inquiries that we're seeing, we, we, we're seeing things that, I'm hearing things that we'd always suspected, but now it's being put on the table. Yeah. Cash swapping hands, bribes taking place, uh, Bursasa scandals everywhere you turn. Yeah. In your time, were you ever approached um, being a part of the municipality to, but with bribes to, to do tenders? Were you approached by people? You know, if there's one thing that we do is you get approached on a daily basis. But one thing, and you can go and ask the supply chain management in, in the city and even the city manager. We have removed ourselves completely from, from, from supply chain management processes because by law, I'm not even supposed to be anywhere near that. By law, you cannot even talk about influencing any kind of tender. And this is why we've been fighting it at a national, a provincial, and local level to say how does councillors influence the awarding of tenders? How does mayors influence the awarding of tenders? My responsibility is to make sure that if there is through the IDP, there's a need for a school, uh, uh, for a, a, a dam to be built somewhere. If there's a need for a road to be built somewhere, there's a need for a clinic to be built somewhere. My responsibility is to say to the city manager and to the senior managers of the city, this is what we now need to do this year. Go make sure that it happens. And if it happens and something is wrong, my responsibility is to come back again and say, where did we go wrong? And that's when if, an, if, a, if a whistleblower comes and says to me, we think that there's some money, um, some, money, uh, some money that has been stolen there. It is then my responsibility to then investigate that. But over and above that, you can then not, not get yourself involved. So what you're saying is um, you, 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 your conscience is clean, right? But you've never been personally approached by someone who's come and said to you, listen, I want this tender. Here's the money. Just keep quiet. Give me the job. No, I mean, what has you, it happened? What you normally do get is that people are saying, well, you know, Take care of me, I'll take care of you. And it happens on a regular basis, almost a, a daily thing. Um, you know, somebody says, take care of me and I'll take care of you. They might not come to you directly and say, here's X amount of money. But it will always be, well, take care of me, I'll take care of you. Oh, I'm interested in this. Can you facilitate? And I always, my answer has always pre, uh, been standard. Yeah. There's a process to be followed. Go follow the process. If you're the, the suitable bidder, you will get the job. That's it. Yeah. So what you're saying is that's how municipalities it's are run in South Africa. It's supposed to be run. It's that's supposed how, to be run. It's supposed to be run that way, but that it's way. not run that way. And there's something that is very much worrying as well, that I, I'm, I'm seeing that there's a trend that is developing. There's a trend that is developing that people who are doing jobs somewhere else would want to abuse the regulations so that they're able to then benefit in jobs in other areas that they hadn't actually applied for. And I'm seeing that as a trend that is developing right now that I think needs to be looked at in the long run and needs to be nipped in the bud. Mm. Just finally, as we, as we head into news, the DA have had its fair share of, of, of setbacks yeah. running in these elections. Yeah. It's just been infighting after infighting and, and not great publicity. Mm. Do you honestly think that you can come in and be the premier? Do you think that you stand a chance? Well, I do. Um, I think uh, the numbers are, are, are in our favor at the moment. Um, you know, I cannot talk about the polling that we are doing and our polling like we did in, 20, in 2014 and in 2011. Our polling are showing, um, you know, very positive uh, growth. What are you going to offer? What, what are you going to offer that's different? Well, first of all, uh, um, accountable government. Second of all, what we are saying is that, uh, um, you know, we need to then change um, the status quo in, in Gauteng as an example. We cannot continue to not have, um, you know, jobs in every home. We cannot continue to have drug and, and substance abuse being the order of the day. We cannot continue to have rogue elements within our police service. We cannot continue to have clinics, hospitals that are, are running the way that they are running right now. And those are things that we need to be working on if we are serious about taking this province forward. And my belief is that if Gauteng work, the rest of South Africa will indeed work.
We'll leave it there. Good luck. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us here on the program. Saliam Samango, of course, the, uh, uh, the, the, the former mayor, he stepped down as the position. He was the executive mayor of the Twane Metro. He's now focusing in on uh, positioning himself as the Gauteng Premier if the DA wins in the national election. So, yet to be seen, but we'll watch with, uh, with much keen interest. Thanks so much for talking to us. It's 8 o'clock. Let's get you.